welcome back. Back with another banger. It's the React Files. Hope you're having a good night. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Just to make sure the algorithm knows what's up. So let's get straight to it. April 8th is it obviously the solar eclipse. And as many as you know, it's a sign from God. Um, as he told Jonah to warn the people of Nineveh, the same way he's warning the people in the U.S. Repent, stop your actions, or it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Now, the exact things that are going to happen that day, I would need to go into prayer and tell you guys later. Like, I, have, I haven't prayed about it yet, and God has not hit me in my spirit yet about it. Um, so in order for me to come back with something, I would need to go into prayer. Just know you are okay if you're with the Lord. And things are going to end up all right. These things must happen. That's what I feel like in my spirit. These things must happen. Jesus Christ is coming back. Well... He's obviously aware. Conjoined twin Abby has been caught in the crossfire between her new husband and his ex-wife as he's been slapped with a paternity suit. Army veteran Josh Bowling officially split from his ex Annika Bowling in 2020 and share an eight-year-old daughter Isabella. Annika had another child that same year who court documents refer to as Isabella's half-sister. It is currently unclear which child is being paternity tested. Annika filed the suit in 2023 against Josh and another man, but it has only come out since Abby Hensel posted their first dance to their socials. I still have so many questions. That parkour came in handy. Impressive. What is this? Oh, really? The vehicle's on its side, and we have one entrapment. Ma'am, I'm gonna hit your sunroof, okay? Yeah, your car was exploding. We need to get you out of out of this vehicle, okay? Okay. Can we get the door? No, ma'am. You're on the side of the vehicle. You're going through the roof right now, okay? We need you to. Come on. I'm, I'm fine. Can I lay down? Remember, people, don't drink and drive. It's not worth it. She didn't even know she was coming out the roof. She was wasted. You all need to pay attention and listen up. The Biden White House is meeting with experts on pandemics about this bird flu. There is a highly contagious pathogen jumping from bird to cow to human. Texas health officials issuing a statewide alert after the first confirmed case of human infection with bird flu that came from a dairy farm. USDA. And at the same time, we're about to see a major disruption in the food supply as the largest fresh egg producer in the U.S. finds the bird flu at their plants. This is in Texas and Michigan, and they're pulling all the eggs. They're stopping the producing of eggs right now. Be careful, because if it is in the eggs that they pulled back, how many eggs in our fridge right now actually are tainted? Now, I'll tell you what my opinion is. Again, it's my opinion, but I foresee this possibly being a really big thing. They're talking about how chaotic and hard to stop the spread of this virus and how quickly it spreads. The Daily Mail even goes as far to say it's a matter of when, not if. And crazy enough, it looks like this article was actually published before it actually spilled over to humans because it says how bird flu is edging closer to human spillover, which it has now done. And if y'all think this is the only thing going on, man, I got so much to freaking tell y'all. That's crazy. Giving me them creepy white lion vibes. I think I'll be good on the eggs for a little bit, if you know what I mean. A 
person in Texas has been diagnosed with H5N1 bird flu after they were exposed to infected dairy cows. I'm a scientist and today is April 2nd, 2024. This H5N1 has an estimated mortality rate of 30 to 60 percent in humans to date. That person in Texas is fortunate to have only had mild symptoms. So far, this H5N1 does not appear to spread from human to human, and that's a big deal. Lab studies have shown that just a few changes to the virus can increase its ability to infect human cells, and in theory, it could undergo those changes while it circulates in the wild in these animals and then gain the ability to transmit among humans. One example of how this could happen would be if pigs were to be infected with H5N1, because pigs actually have receptors for both bird flu and human flu. For that reason, pigs have been referred to as theoretical mixing vessels for influenza, where bird flu could undergo a process called reassortment and then be able to transmit efficiently among humans. Now for context, H5N1's estimated roughly 60% mortality rate in humans to date is crazy high compared to prior influenza pandemics. Estimates of case fatality range from about 0.5% for the 1957 pandemic to 2-3% to for the 1918 pandemic. If you learned something so far, you should follow me and like this video. Now you have to listen closely to this part. If H5N1 were to undergo changes to transmit easily among humans, those changes could also make it cause less severe disease at the same time, but that does not necessarily have to be the case. It could still be highly lethal. The scope of impact of an H5N1 pandemic among humans would be a combination of both the severity of disease it causes and its transmission rate. Even if it maintained a really high fatality rate, if it didn't spread very easily, the scope of its destruction could be relatively limited, or vice versa. Therefore, although unlikely, an H5N1 pandemic would be a big enough potential issue that the government has actually already made stockpiles of H5N1 vaccines, just in case, and the government also has a secret stockpile of chickens to help make H5N1 vaccines in the event of a pandemic because you can actually make influenza vaccines using chicken eggs. There are also oral antiviral medications that appear to still work with this H5N1, which is good news. Now, since dairy cows are getting infected, you may be wondering whether that impacts their milk. The answer is that it is possible, but that sick cows are removed from milk production supply and, in any event, milk is pasteurized for this exact reason of decreasing potential pathogen hazards in the milk. That is the whole point of pasteurized milk. Raw, unpasteurized milk is trending on social media, but it's generally a bad idea from a scientific and public health standpoint. If there are updates, I'll keep you in the loop. Thank you so much, Dr. Nock. That's Dr. Dot N O C. Make sure you go follow him. You know, this is crazy, yo. You know, so it's good to hear what's going on from a real scientist. Don't want to jump the gun just yet. What you think? Let me know in the comments down below. A total solar eclipse. It happens when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun, completely blocking out the light. On April 8th, more than 32 million people across Mexico, the United States, and Canada could see the sun completely darkened by the moon's shadow. And that moment of total darkness could last more than four minutes in some places. It's also going to be the last one for quite some time. A total solar eclipse won't happen again in the United States for about another 20 years. Location is key. The total eclipse is only visible inside a very narrow track known as the path of totality. It stretches more than 10 U.S. states from Texas through Maine, and the timing changes depending on where you are within that path. People outside that narrow band will still be able to see a partial solar eclipse. That's when the moon only blocks part of the sun's face. That should be visible in all 48 contiguous U.S. states. Now, if you're planning on peeking at a total or partial eclipse, remember to get you some certified eclipse glasses. Uh, regular sunglasses, not strong enough to protect your eyes. Otherwise, severe eye damage can occur. A solar retina burn can permanently injure your eyes, and you might not even feel it until it's too late. The solar eclipse thing, right, on uh, April 8th, and then at the same time, the CERN machine is going to be turned on. Then what is also going to happen? Well, NASA is going to fire a bunch of rockets into the sun. Sounds like a sounds like a good plan. It sounds like it makes sense. So the only thing I'm going to say about this whole thing with the eclipse and, and CERN being turned on is I would say be very very aware, intentional, and and attentive to your reality before the eighth, before that stuff happens, and then be even more aware of your reality post eclipse post CERN machine being turned on the the mandala effect i'm just gonna say that i'm very curious to see to hear to find out about anything that might come as a result that has to do with the mandala effect if you don't know what it is then google it stay safe y'all interesting point of view right 
the Mandela effect. And with CERN doing what they doing. Like the burning steam bears went back to burning steam bears. That'd be crazy. You never know. Interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Oh my God, you guys. What the hell is going on that all of these places are declaring states of emergency for an upcoming event, the solar eclipse, on the 8th of April? When in the history of our lives have they called the state of emergency for an eclipse? It's not just happening in Niagara Falls. It's also happening in Texas, Indiana, all over the place all over the place and not only that you've got to listen to this guy okay this is indiana and, and now now you can listen to this guy niagara falls has declared a state of emergency but get this it's for something that's going to happen in the future in one of the strangest stories i've heard in a while the niagara region announced friday that they'll be declaring a state of emergency to accommodate an upcoming once in a lifetime event a solar eclipse that's set to take place on april 8th but it gets even stranger. At the exact same time as the eclipse, NASA will be firing three rockets into the moon's shadow, and the CERN particle accelerator will be firing up for the first time in two years to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Am I the only one weirded out by this? Why? Why? I think that everyone right now is asking themselves, why? Why is CERN to test world's most powerful particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse well to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe what so while nasa will fire three rockets at the solar eclipse cern in geneva is going to take out of hibernation the large hydron collider particle accelerator and the progress can be followed on live on cern webpage late last week for the first time since the annual winter shutdown a first beam of protons briefly went around the accelerator's 27-kilometer circle at full 6.8 TV energy. The first collisions of proton beams are expected on April 8th, when all tests and fine-tuning of the machines are over. Then the large CERN experiments involving colliding protons can resume their measurement program. CERN to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Wouldn't that be called God? Godness? Source? The world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator is set to smash protons together on April 8th to search for invisible particles secretly powering our universe. What could possibly go wrong? Large Hydron Collider will smash atoms together for the first time since 2022. Because it wasn't bad enough last time the multiverse started merging. Let's give it another round, guys. Infinite timelines, infinite merging. The experiment hopes to discover subatomic particles that exist inside atoms. Oh, what could possibly go wrong? And next month, CERN will shoot them down a 17-mile-long tunnel at nearly the speed of light to recreate conditions a second after the Big Bang? Why? 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 Who is allowing this? Why do they have permission to do this? Who is allowing this? Why do they have permission to do this? Why do they decide for everybody if they want to put us in the circumstances that you might recreate things that were similar or close to the Big Bang and when it happened? I'm like, oh my God, no. Leave that alone. And if you'd like to know more about NASA's Serpent Deity program, it's in the video before this one. The Space Agency's project is atmospheric perturbations around the cliff pass. They will investigate how that drop in sunlight and temperature affects the Earth's upper atmosphere. APEP, -E named after the serpent deity from ancient Egyptian mythology, ne nemesis of the sun deity Ra, according to NASA. So during the total solar eclipse on April 8th, there's going to be the Hydron Collider that's going to be activated, and there's going to be the NASA Serpent Deity Project that's going to be launched. And stay tuned, because now in the next episode, I'm going to tell you about how Julius Caesar died during a total solar eclipse. But that time, that eclipse lasted a year. 
omens and predictions these total solar eclipse bring. Shout outs to Christina Bruno, the muse, 1111. That was a great bit of information right there. But yeah, I think the, the deity they named it after is what's, you know, ear catching. APEP -E is named after the serpent deity from ancient Egyptian mythology, nemesis of the sun deity Ra. That's crazy, because CERN is underground while they shoot rockets up into the sky. You know, there's a lot of, you know, story like theater. <laughs> with these names. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. So I guess we gotta talk about this April 8th eclipse. NASA's firing three rockets up to the moon's shadow. What? Why? Well, apparently they're measuring atmospheric perturbations around the eclipse path. And that's why they named their program Uphep after the serpent deity from ancient Egyptian mythology. You know, the one who was the nemesis of Ra, the serpent that ate the sun. It seems like quite a stretch to get that acronym, right? Have you ever noticed they don't name their rockets or their space programs after the Apostle Paul or Moses? Just saying. Oh, and also on April 8th, CERN is firing up their Mandela Effect machine. I mean, their Hydron Collider. Yeah, that's um interesting timing, right? Only to go in the Wayback Machine, Aleister Crowley, famous Satanist, contacted Iowas, the devil himself, on April 8th, 1904. So 120 years to the date, this this happens and if you wonder why nasa might name their project after a serpent deity well this is their logo so yeah once again it's all connected boy the connections are real i seen a video from black hole sun in that clip but yeah man it's crazy i think 12 30 i'm downstairs um i go downstairs to the studio i come up out the studio and I'm headed back upstairs to like the main area where everyone's kind of congregating and hanging out. And uh, the music changed. It was like really hard and heavy at first. And then, you know, like jamming, dancing music. And it was a little softer, you know, it was a little more sensual when I came out the studio and started going upstairs. And on my way upstairs, there's like this couch. Um... I won't say how the couch is designed because then that may give away whose party and whose house this was. There was a couch and on the couch, I saw a couple of guys really going at it hard and heavy. And, um, man, and I was like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, my brain, I'm thinking, well, you know, the celebrity party, people do what they do. As I started moving up stairs, I passed them up and I noticed that it wasn't just those two guys. It was more and more people just going at it. I was like, okay, it's time for me to roll. I'm going to grab my stuff and I'm going to get up out of here. I did not know that's how this went down. So was that shocking? Absolutely. Was I forced or coerced into anything? I was not. Um, but I, why they felt that comfortable? I don't know. Maybe the invite list, they was like, yeah, all these people. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm shocked. That it went down. But I've been to another situation, another person's party, celebrity party. And, you know, a celebrity tapped me on my shoulder. And I was hanging out with them. And it was like, yo, nephew, uh, you might want to go into the other party because this cabana, we about to close it up. And they closed up the cabana. And there was a, about three or four big name artists in there. And a whole bunch of ladies start walking in that cabana and a security guard stood in front of the door. Hey, they didn't coerce me. And um, shout out to my guy, Brandon T. Jackson, man. Brandon T. Jackson, um, you know, it. I, I don't know what he's up to these days, but at this particular party, Brandon T. came up to me and he said, yo, man, like Satan will steal your soul in this industry, bro. And he was really like, I loved the fact that he felt like He's like, I love your soul and your spirit, and I want you to thrive, Cray. I don't want you to get devoured out here. And I just appreciated that because for him, he was like, he has seen some detriments and some of the dark side of things. And he was like, yo, I want you to be taken care of. Man, he gave his own account. Shout out to Brandon T. Jackson for being a real one. Yeah, it's crazy how that whole vibe changed just like that. At least at the cabana, they gave him a warning. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below.
And Zell always told me we'd be at the parties. He said, you leave leave 30 minutes for the devil get there. <laughs> okay? <laughs> always remember that Denzel would leave the parties early. Mm -hmm. I followed Denzel out. My family owned the only African-American faith-based network in the world. The first mm -hmm. African-American faith-based network owned. We're in 100 million homes. Mm -hmm. Why are we not talking about this? Why are we not talking about that we have a, our own network? Why are we not talking about the production studios that was built in Detroit, the gyms and the blocks mm -hmm. that we built? I mean, only God can curse me or bless me, and that's it. That's why I don't care what people say about me. Oh, you did this. You did. I don't care. God is the one that raises a man up. Mm. And I leave 30 minutes for the devil get there. <laughs> I'm like P. Diddy. I'm not going to speak bad about P. Diddy because um, he's still a black man. He, he, I mean, um, mistakes happen. And I can't say if it is or it's not a mistake. But things happen in life. And P. Diddy business is P. Diddy business. It's not my job or anyone else's job to go on the Internet and, and stump him and kick a man while he's down. Um, my take on it is it's not my business. Um, I don't think it's right at all, and I don't condone it. Even if that happened to my daughter, I would be hurt, but um, that's the choice that my daughter made. She, uh, I was at a party at Diddy Crib in, in L.A. This was, uh, this, was, this was the beginning of, of 2020, you know what I mean? Uh, Diddy had, he had put everybody else out the crib, like the, the influx of people, he had put them out. But he had he had uh he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time, man, and was really, you know what I mean, like putting his arm around me. Right. So he had put majority of the people out, but he allowed me to stay in there. You want to be a capper, right? I want to be a capper. No, I'm just saying. To the person that wants to be a capper. Oh, okay, okay. You wanna be a capper. You wanna be alpha, whatever the f it is, okay? We're gonna haze you and haze you and haze you until you are a capper. That's what happened. People sold their souls to Diddy. <laughs> and then they're mad now because the hazing process was a little bit rougher than they thought. You can't, you can't. Why do you think I love Diddy so much? You're not gonna dethrone this man because he know how to get you there. By way of hazing you, I, they call it, I call it haze. <laughs> and we're gonna still do this. We're, we're gonna still do this. It, it, it's not gonna stop. Take that, take that. Take that. It's still gonna happen. You got three million and we're still waking up in the morning, drinking cognac, screaming, bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> and it won't stop. And it can't stop. And it's not gonna stop. You thought just because you got three million you changed it? Take care of what you need to take care of. And you're glad that you got away with three million. Be happy. No, don't you stop me. Be happy you got away with three million. I don't give a f what you told the cameras. You wanted to be Illuminati. You wanted the big cars and you wanted to get you wanted to get pimped for it. So don't blame him for giving you what you asked for. Cause he's still gonna be giddy at the end of the day. It's called hazing. Stop playing with yourself. He got mighty passionate talking about that. That's crazy. 2024 is exposing everything. And that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed tonight's rapid hope. Want to give a huge shout out to Tuju Simpson and Is This Me Con? I appreciate your support, peace, and blessings. If you haven't already, please take a second just to smash that like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, just to make sure the algorithm knows up. So what are we gonna do, y'all? That's right. Run these numbers up. Thanks again. Until next time.